able to photograph the Milky Way is a truly amazing experience, but to do it requires planning, a great composition, and lots of gear. When you look at planning your Milky Way shot, one of the major factors is light pollution. The less light pollution, the brighter the Milky Way is going to be. There are tools like Dark Sky Finder that let you check out your local area and find the darkest spot to shoot in. The next thing to look at is the lunar phases. You're looking for a new moon when there's no moon in the sky. And you can either shoot on that day, the day before, the day after. You can check the luminosity, and you can also check when the moon will set. So if you miss the new moon, you can actually shoot after the moon sets. The third factor in planning a Milky Way time lapse is the weather. We actually bumped this shoot back a day because yesterday on Sourdough Mountain, it was covered in half an inch of water. The last step in planning your Milky Way time lapse is looking at when the sun sets and when the sun rises. We typically shoot two to three hours after the sun sets, and we try to end our time lapse at least an hour before the sun rises to make sure all of our shots are exposed properly. The next step to shooting a great Milky Way time lapse is finding a good composition. Now, before we get to that, I want to show you what we have set up here. With the Rhino slider, you can either mount it to a tripod like we have here or directly on the ground using the all-terrain legs. Now, when we look at finding a good composition, I break up the scene into three different layers. First, you have your foreground, which in this shot here, we're actually gonna be using the rock as our foreground. If you don't have anything that your camera is relatively close to as it's sliding, you won't get the feeling of sliding as much. The next area in your composition is the actual subject that your eye is drawn to in the time-lapse. For us, it's the sourdough lookout. And finally, you want some motion in your background, which is why clouds and stars in the Milky Way are so great to look at. If you combine all three of those, you'll get a great composition and it'll add to the value of your time-lapse. Now, after you've played around with your shot a little bit and found the right composition, we actually have to set up the shot on the slider itself. With the Rhino Motion, it's extremely easy to do. Let me show you how it works. We're gonna navigate into the time-lapse menu, go into advanced time-lapse. Rhino Motion just calibrated, so it ran into the end of the slider, and now it knows exactly where it's at, so you won't run into the end of the slider again. Now, using Rhino Arc, it's a very simple and intuitive UI. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this wheel, and the camera is actually moving and changing my position. I'm actually gonna turn my camera to the left because I know that the Milky Way starts in the left side of the sky tonight and moves across in about 2, 3 a.m. before sunrise, it's gonna be on the right side. So I think a sweeping shot would work good for this scene. So I'm gonna click set in. My camera is going to move to out. And when I get to out, I turn the wheel again. And that looks like a good composition. Now to preview this composition, Within the advanced time-lapse menu, you can click move to in. And since it's still daylight, we can, we can preview our shot and make sure that's exactly what we wanna get. All right, it's 12 o'clock, we just woke up. It's time for the last step of shooting a Milky Way time-lapse and that is gear. So right now we have the A7S with a 14 mil Rockinon lens on it on a 24 inch Rhino Slider Evo Carbon with motion and arc. And we're using the intervalometer in arc to trigger our camera. So before we actually get to that setup and how we're going to be taking pictures with it, there's a couple rules of thumb I wanna share with you. One, make sure you're shooting in raw. When you take these photos into post, they need to be in raw for you to get the most out of them. Two, make sure your white balance is set to anything really. It doesn't necessarily matter if you're shooting in RAW. And three, make sure your camera is set to bold mode. And that means that Rhino Motion will be able to trigger it. The biggest thing you're fighting against with the Milky Way time lapse is light or the lack of it. And so I've been super impressed with the Sony A7S because you can bump the ISO all the way up to 51,000 and your image isn't really that grainy. So when you look, look at exposure, you're looking at your lens, how much light is going to let into it. We have a pretty fast lens, it's a 2.8 lens, so that's good. You look at your camera, which really you wanna, you wanna boost your ISO up as far as you can without getting a really, really grainy image. And the last one is your shutter speed. And the shutter speed, max shutter speed is really dictated by what's called the rule of 600. So you take 600, 
and you divide it by the focal length of your lens, and that ish gives you the max amount of seconds you can shoot without getting star trails. With our current setup right now, we have an ISO maxed out really in my opinion to 51,000. Our shutter speed is 20 seconds. And let's actually jump to the controller right here. This is how, this is really the next step in setting up your shot. Right now I have my exposure set to 20 seconds here. And the workflow with this, won't really work with this light on right now. Um, I click test shot and it's gonna trigger an exposure on my camera. And so I turn this light off, make sure everything looks good. I would move to my out position, which I'll stop this exposure here. Take an exposure from my out position, make sure all that looks great. A little trick with this is you can actually boost your ISO up even higher and lower your shutter speed so that you can make sure you have proper focus, make sure your composition's better without waiting 20 seconds for each shot. So I already know that this composition looks good. So I'm gonna go with that. But looking at the Rhino Motion menu, right now I have a duration of about four hours. We'll probably start this time lapse closer to 1230. Uh, the sun's gonna rise about 530 and it's gonna really start getting light with a 20 second exposure closer to four. So the end of our time lapse might actually be blown out a little bit. I'm okay with it. I, I need to get more pictures for a longer time lapse with this. Um, so right here, our playback is how long the amount of pictures you're taking will last in your edit when they're all compiled together. So there's a few other settings here. You can choose to ramp if you want to ease in and ease out of your move. If not, you click start. It's going to move to its in. Click go and it gives you percentage done, time elapsed and shots taken. So we're going to take 672 shots. Let's let it sit, see what happens. The Milky Way time-lapse went great last night. One of the photographers with us actually let us borrow his dew heater because our lens was getting a ton of dew on it. I've never used one before, but I'm gonna add it to my gear list because it definitely saved the shot and didn't allow dew to accumulate on the lens. One thing I did mess up though, is the Milky Way was in the frame at the beginning of the shot, but it actually went out of the frame towards the end of it. Um, I'm just gonna say that was intentional. So right now we're taking another time-lapse it's not a Milky Way time lapse, but the view is awesome up here. Thanks for watching.